Here's my video lecture on why we have seasons, Earth-Sun relationships as it's otherwise known. Let's start with the Earth's orbit around the Sun. It's an ellipse. And at aphelion, we are actually at our farthest point from the Sun at 152 million kilometers. That's in July. Perihelion is in January, 147 million kilometers. It doesn't take exactly 365 days to complete this elliptical orbit. It's uh, more like when rounded up 0.25 extra days every year. So that's why we have a leap year before, because 0.25 times 4 gives you one, one day. Got to add it on. And during our northern hemisphere winter, the sun's closer to us. So does that mean we see some sort of temperature effect because of this? We'll cover that in another lecture. Also, you should know that summer is a few days longer. If you go on the calendar and count this, you'll find it to be true. That's because... The Earth is traveling faster in orbit during perihelion than during aphelion. But the Earth's seasons have nothing to do with the distance from the Earth to the Sun. There's about 3.3 degree variance in intensity there, not enough to account for the seasons. It's all about the tilt of the Earth's axis, controls the angle of sunlight and the number of hours of sunlight or length of day. The matter of angle is very important. More direct sunlight that's more direct overhead can produce more energy per square unit of area. And uh, when it's lower in the sky, less energy. And also, when it's lower in the sky, it has to pass through more atmosphere, and energy can be lost through scattering and absorption. Here's the overused but pretty good flashlight example in A. It's directly overhead, so the same amount of energy is applied to a smaller surface area, and in B, a larger surface area. Our tilt is 23.5 degrees presently. I say presently. We'll cover that in another video lecture. But in this example, as shown, the southern hemisphere is at a point in the Earth's orbit around the Sun where it's tilted more directly toward the Sun than the northern hemisphere. Each hemisphere takes its turn, having that being true. Length of day is involved. Without the tilt, everywhere on the Earth's surface would have 12 hours of daylight. The Earth's equator would get most energy all the time. The poles would be uh, having the Sun at the horizon and would stay cold. There'd be no seasons in this scenario. The Earth's axis is tilted, uh, and that changes the length of day, though. Most dramatic near the poles, where daytime can last for 24 hours and nighttime, too. And less change at the equator. Length of day in Springfield in June at the solstice, 14 hours, 40 minutes, approximately. And during the winter solstice in December, 9 hours, 40 minutes, so a change of 5 hours. Insulation. This is a function of sun angle and length of day. So you just add all those up, and this is how much energy is available. And real quickly, I'll show you the extremes in this graph. The yellow is the equator, zero degrees. Notice that the energy is always high and varies very little. Purple is the poles, 90 degrees north or south. It shuts down half the year and goes crazy the other half. Here's a good example of our seasons. Note that the relative tilt at 23 and a half degrees is always pointed at the same position in this slide. So that again implies that at two points, the two northern and southern hemispheres exchange, getting the better energy, and at the equinoxes, they're about equal. So winter solstice around December 22nd, Tropic of Capricorn, south of the equator, the sun's directly overhead. Northern hemisphere tilted away, getting cold. Everyone north of the Arctic Circle has 24 hours of night. Everyone south of the Antarctic Circle, 24 hours of light. Summer solstice around June 21st, sun directly overhead at the Tropic of Cancer. That line runs through between Cuba and Florida. 23 and a half degrees north of the equator. Northern Hemisphere, of course, is getting the lion's share of energy. Everyone south of the Antarctic Circle, 24 hours of night on this day. Everyone north of the Arctic Circle, 24 hours of light. And there's a quick example of the two extremes, the solstice examples, summer and winter. The equinoxes, here's the spring equinox, March 21st, roughly. The sun's directly overhead at the equator. Northern and summer's hemisphere are receiving equal exposures of sunlight. North Pole begins its six months of daylight. South Pole begins its six months of darkness. Around September 23rd, we have the fall, beginning of fall, autumnal equinox. Sun is directly overhead at the equator again. Both hemispheres receiving, again, equal exposure. North Pole waves goodbye to the sun. South Pole starts six months of daylight. And there's an interesting slide. Can you guess what time of day that was taken or approximately over what time period? It's very counterintuitive at those latitudes. That is looking north at their, quote, unquote, sunset. Sun never drops below the horizon. Length of day is affected. Here's a quick example. Uh, in uh, solstice, winter solstice, the sun rises in the southeast, sets in the southwest. A shorter path, so a little shorter day. And during the summer solstice, rises in the northeast, sets in the northwest. Longer day, longer path. The National Weather Service has defined the official meteorological seasons. Winter is December through February, and these are broken down into three-month intervals. I'll have more in another video lecture coming up.